obviously we would want to say that God loves, you know, all people, uh, regardless of their sexual preferences, but God does have some moral boundaries that we are to recognize that marriage is between a man and a woman. Uh, and that's the context that it's explicitly stated in the scripture. Now that doesn't mean that we can't get along with people who, you know, have different opinions on this, that we can't, uh, love each other. Uh, but it has seemed as if some of the posture toward people who haven't fallen in sync with the BLM movement, uh, as it relates to like a Breonna Taylor, state her name. There's almost been some anarchy. It's almost as if you got to fall in line with their way of seeing a revolution. And if you don't, then you are canceled. You're rejected. What's driving that? Part of it is the idea that, and I think out of giving the benefit of the doubt, they don't want the person that they believe has now died unjustly to be forgotten. They sure. don't want that person, you know, because of systems or media and rhetoric to just get pushed to the, the back of the conversation. But then also, I, um, I recently watched a video, an interview with Patrice Colors, where she says that they actually use the hashtag and use the name to draw strength from that from the deceased person, to conjure up the spirit of that deceased person. And so there, there's some, some African spiritualism in the mix as well. And I can't say that it is for every BLM person, you know, person who uh, aligns with the organization or at least for every, um, you know, founder, because there's three. But I know for Patrice and what she puts forward for the organization is that this is another way that they use things like say the name, say his name, say her name. It's because they, they draw strength from those spirits. Yeah, isn't that interesting? So here you see some spiritualism that's kind of leaked in. And so it's kind of hard to know what exactly is their goal. We hear we're not for the nuclear family on their old uh, cover page, uh, that they're pro-choice, uh, that they're going to be about the LGBTQ movement, that they are trained Marxists. And so we consider that. And then you bring up this whole idea of some African spiritualism that seems to be a part of their methodology when they're out doing some of their protests. And then we have this whole thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, white cops are oppressors to, uh, you know, African-Americans. Uh, so how do we figure out what exactly their motivation is? Because it seems like there's a lot being thrown at people to decipher through. You know, for me, it's it's really cut and dry. Like they say what they're about, and if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, quack quack. Like, <laughs> right. I I just I have to run with what you give me. If if this is who you say you are, I have to believe that. Now, does that mean that I don't affirm that Black Lives Matter? No, I'm black. Like I do believe that Black Lives Matter, and yet I cannot affirm yeah. an organization like Black Lives Matter because of the tenets of that organization. And so what I think that Christians need to do is really get into the, the organization, get into the tenets, look at their website, read what they're about. If it clearly is antithetical to scripture, then I, I think that it's clear that that's not something that we can engage in and support. When we look at their representatives in different cities and how those representatives are calling for riots and calling for theft and all of that, that's it's clear in scripture that we don't participate like that, whether we're participating with Christians or non-Christians. And so what is the call of the organization? If the call of the organization is to riot and loot and it gives excuse for those things, we need to really sit back and say, is this really what I want to partner my time, money, um, you know, physical efforts with? 